Hello and welcome back to my studio. My name is Golden Zen and I'm going to review another product of sample modeling. Today we're going to take a closer look at the trombone, which is hell of an instrument, I might say. Uh, in the last video I've showed you the uh, trumpet, which already is quite a tricky instrument to uh, emulate on the computer digitally. But uh, like I've explained in the last video, sample modeling really did an outstanding job on this and also on the trombone because the thing is, the trumpet has valves. Still, it is a very dynamic instrument since it's a blown instrument. And the trombone is even trickier because the trombone has the slide thing. And uh, that means that you've got a whole not a dynamic range that you have to deal with. But again, sample modeling has done an outstanding job. And I'm going to show you in this video why and how exactly they did that. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to say a short thing. Um, currently, I'm working on the rescore of uh, James Bond, Never Say Never Again. And um, I'm so glad I've discovered the sample modeling instruments in general because in that kind of music, general and soundtrack uh, music, usually brass is an essential element. And it's an essential element, but it's really hard to fake in a computer. I've explained this in the introduction video already, but... Uh, uh, my experience with this product is just so amazing. I mean, all the things I, I never dreamed of making before, I can do now, and it's really amazing. And I'd like to bring in a question that I was asked online on my YouTube video of the trumpet. Um, a user or a, a watcher of the last video sent me a question about reverb because um, I've explained it briefly in the previous video about the thing that the products, best to my knowledge, are recorded in a sound booth uh, individually. And what you usually have um, is when you have an, an instrument that is recorded in a sound booth on, on, on their own, you know, just one instrument in a sound booth, is that if you want to use that instrument in an orchestral context, you often don't get good results because when you record a trumpet in a sound booth, it already sounds completely different than in a, in a, in a huge orchestral hall or something. Uh, that means the sound is different already. And what I often encounter is the problem that you can't really, uh, you know, get rid of that problem by just adding reverb and hall. Still, the original sound that is not right stays the same. But, uh, like I've explained, with those products, somehow it works. I mean, I've, I've used it for orchestral tracks in Never Say Never Again Rescore and it just works perfectly. Um, you know, I, it's really hard to explain but we, if you work a little bit with equalizers and if you work with uh, reverb and whole settings you can really make those instruments sound like in an orchestra. Uh, that is really cool and it's really something that is very, you see very seldom because uh, it's really hard to do. But anyway, let's get into the trombone. Uh, I have my tech control breath controller here once again just to control the dynamics and let's see how sample modeling uh, worked on the dynamic range and how they worked down the dynamic range of a trombone. You have the tenor trombone. Okay, really cool sound. Then you have two other tenor trombones. Uh, I've explained this in the trumpet video also. It's, it's for, uh, the reason is that if you want to have like an orchestral setup or uh, a, a band, big band setup where you have uh, the same instrument multiple times, so let's say like two or three trombones, um, they don't sound exactly the same, the various uh, tenor trombones. It's just to make it sound more realistic. And it's not, it doesn't sound like it's copied three or two or three times. And then you have the valve trombone. It has a slightly different feel to it. Um, the valve trombone is an old kind of trombone because, like I've explained before, the slide trombone has the slide and the valve works just the same way like a trumpet. It has valves, you know. And then you also got a bass trombone. This is a really cool instrument because, uh, like the name indicates, you can go really deep with this thing. Um, I like to call it the bad boy just because of the sound. You can go really deep. It's really amazing. And then again, you got the setup where they prepared 
um, uh, three trombones together and you can already choose them assigned with the breath controller, you can choose them assigned with the keyboard or with the wind control which is another product. Uh, and this, this is amazing for orchestral setup so if you want to have a whole trombone section you can use that and it's, it comes pre-prepared, okay? And uh, it sounds like this. Instant orchestra instruments, okay? And now, a really cool little uh, feature is that you can actually transpose uh, every single trombone which uh, gives you a cool option because now you can predefine chords. So uh, let's, for example, if I want to do a G minor chord, I can adjust the other two trombones. The first, obviously, is going to be a G at the value plus three, which is uh, three steps above the G note, which is a B flat, okay? And those are the two first notes that uh, form a G minor chord. And the last note is going to be a D, and that is a value of 7, so I'm going to transpose the last trombone by a value of 7, and now you can hear a G minor chord. And again, the first new is assigned to the key switch section of the keyboard, which is the plunger mute. Um, this is the plunger that you put in front of your instrument, and uh, you can just go like, this is the standard sound here. Okay, so you can already hear I put some reverb in there. Uh, there's a pre-built reverb fitting to the instruments, built in uh, sample modeling instruments as well. Uh, and you can add it later on, but here I use the ones they uh, they included in the package. Okay, so uh, you have the plunger mute. Uh, this is the standard sound. Okay, and with the plunger mute, it sounds like this. This is the static sound, so to speak. That means just the sound on its own, but the cool thing is uh, when you hear old jazz music or Dixieland music, for example, sometimes the trombones would make solos with a plunger mute. And the cool thing is if you put that plunger in front of the instrument and you start to waggle it around, it produces this wah-wah effect. And that almost sounds like the instrument is actually talking. And you can achieve that kind of effect by uh, controlling the CC11 expression, which is the dynamic uh, range of the dynamic setup of the instrument. So uh, what I like to do is because uh, I like to get the feel of the instruments. I know this is this is digitally created, but um, I like to do some kind of a wah wah with my mouse as a kind of a wow. Okay, uh, but also you can you can to be really accurate, you can add this later on uh, in, in your in your uh, program in your sequencer program. I use Cubase. And you can also go to the CC11 expression um, sheet, and you can see the expression here, uh, which is this thing, okay? And here you can really uh, play around. So you can do something like this. You can even add more detail when you go to the, like I mentioned, the expression uh, section, okay? And then the other plunger mutes are um, on the drop-down menu, on the mutes. Uh, you have the same like with the trumpet, it's the same family of instruments, so you, you've got the straight mute, which changes the sound a bit. Okay, and you also have the cup mute. Then you've got the bucket mute, which changes the sound again. Kind of dampens the sound a little. Okay, and then you have the harmony mute. Uh, 
the harmony with the stem. And then you have the other key switches um, that I've explained in the trumpet video. Like I said, there are a lot of things that I already um, had uh, on the trumpet video. I'm just going to this briefly. Again, you have the folds, um, which is... Uh, you have the slow folds if you hit the key gently. And you have the quick folds if you hit it hard. Okay? This is a really cool feature. I use that quite frequently. And uh, then you have the nice endings. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the dynamics of the instrument. Um, the trumpet already is really impressive. Um, you have the transition of the notes. If you hit the keys gently, it does a very slow transition. If you hit them hard, it changes the note right away. So if I go like... If I press it hard, it changes the note right away. And this is quite, quite tricky because usually when you have pitched instruments or you can, you can, there are a lot of libraries where you can pitch bend instruments, but usually, um, it sounds goofy, it just doesn't sound right, it gets this Mickey Mouse effect. But uh, they use a really, really intelligent system on this, and so it's, it sounds just natural. And uh, it's really cool to do those kind of Dixieland tracks because, of, you know, we can do, it's, it sounds very cool. It yields in a very cool way, so you can tell. And in the context of the song, it's, you can do really cool things. You have the possibility to pan your instruments, so you can put the trombone to the left or to the right, and it will result in a better sound than if you pan them in your uh, workstation. So I'm going to just demonstrate to you what this means. Okay. And now the cool thing is the distance too. So right now it's set to zero. So the trombone player is right uh, next to us, so to speak. But you can also put it further away and it sounds really, really amazing. Can you kind of listen to it? Okay, so he's ran far away in the back of the room. And now we say to go to the right or to the left. This is a really amazing result. This is also something you want to keep in the back of your head if you're doing an orchestral composition. Um, this is a way to make it sound more realistic because obviously in an orchestral recording, uh, the trombone players are not right next to you. They're further away in the room. And uh, so you can put them all a little bit away. Now, another cool feature to increase the dynamic range of the instrument is the timbal shaping. Um, I could just easily say that it is an EQ, an equalizer, but it's not quite the same. An equalizer will just equalize all of that uh, instrument that you have. But you can see different steps that are 10 steps and they allow you to, um, to kind of get the sound that you want. And I'm just going to show you 
how it changes the sound, the different values that you have. So right now we have the stand sound. Okay. And now we'll just fiddle around a little bit while holding the notes so you can hear the differences. Okay, it allows you really to get the sound that you want. You can really tweak the sound. This is important in the context of a song because sometimes you will find that um, you have a song and then you load the trombone, you want to play it, you want to use it, but it, the sound is just doesn't, it doesn't sound right. Uh, it has too much bass or it, it lacks of, of high frequencies or middle frequency or whatever. And this allows you to control it individually.